All right, to prove that that is the correct side where you switched out the rear passenger side, if you want to listen really close, it does make a grinding noise. I don't know if the video can pick that up, but that's why when it spins faster, it's making a winding, winding up noise, they call it. All right, now we're gonna go on the freeway. You hear the wind up noise, listen very carefully. First you hear the engine change gears. It's like a wind up noise, almost like a plane taking off. Welcome back, it's Sid, Sid from Hunter and Chavi. So this channel is dedicated to help you save money uh, doing fixing your car yourself. So forgive for the background noise, we do have a lot of stuff going on. To figure out which wheel bearing, and I, I'm guesstimating from what we did the road test, that it's probably coming from this uh, wheel hub, this side. So in order to check, we're gonna have to uh, lift up the car, preferably both sides, uh, you know, like if you're doing the front, both of them up, you're doing that, both of them up. Kind of wiggle the wheels and that'll tell if it makes a noise, it wiggles, that means it's the wheel bearing. So, and thankfully, and I'll flash it across the screen, that the wheel bearing is uh, pretty easy to replace and pretty uh, inexpensive. We'll do that, we'll jack the car and uh, get this thing fixed. All right, tools to get this job done. Um, so you're gonna order the wheel bearing from uh, Amazon, is actually from Trusted Relic. Reliable quality RQ. They have a YouTube channel. Check them out. That's where they got inspired and use their video to do this video. Um, so you need that. Um, make sure it's the correct uh, one for this car. And there's the stock number. You also need this. This is the axle nut. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the old one. Other things you need. You also need a big socket here. Uh, half inch drive. You're gonna need the 36 millimeter to get the axle nut off. So you need that, and I bought that from Amazon. That's the product, the Swan Lake is the brand I, I chose. Need some gloves, eye protection, PV Blast, again, not sponsored by any of these. Uh, some axle grease, um, you watch SMA Auto or South Main Street Auto. The guy calls it anti-sneeze, so anti-seize some of that. A compact half inch drive this is also from amazon i think it's about 180 for this one uh, flashlight uh, again i'm a fan of dewalt now as i start to do most things if you're a fan of this channel you know what that is my all-time favorite l-shaped needle nose plier uh, a puncher to get the accident to lock up and to unlock it you can use that with a hammer uh, 3 8 drive a ratchet with the extension two inch and then a three inch a half inch uh, ratchet and you got a couple of sockets here this is a 12 millimeter socket 10 millimeter you need a 19 to get the uh the lug nut off up that car there and then 17 millimeter it's a impact drive and your basic felt pad flathead and of course as i do more and more stuff Again, I'm not an expert, but it seems like talking everything to specifications or via specifications is the best thing to do. So I got this from Amazon. This goes up to 250 foot-pounds of torque. So very easy to use. It's all digital. Just turn it on and you set it to whatever you want. It'll beep, it'll yell at you. It's got lights, it's got dings and whistles. Great stuff to have. I think super duper cheap. I think uh, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. So those are the things you're gonna to need to do this 2007-2011 uh, rear wheel bearing replacement on this uh, particular vehicle. We're gonna need those before we get started. All right, let's get started. Speaking of getting started. All right, here's the setup. So both wheels are off the ground. So the idea is to have these both on jack stands. You can see that one's off the ground. Right there. This one's off the ground too, right there. Wiggle. The wheels either side like when we took that drive i hear it more on this side so it's the uh, passenger rear wheel is where i hear the wheel bearing that winding humming noise 
A lot of people describe it as a humming or a winding noise. As the car goes faster, it gets louder. If it slows down, it makes less noise, obviously, because the bearing doesn't spin as fast. So that's the reason. Let's do it. We'll check out both hubs and see which one will make the most noise. First, we'll do this side. So you want to wiggle side to side and up and down. That's pretty solid. Now. Same thing here, we're gonna do left and right, back and forth. Well, here thing thing left and right. I may do, because it's so cheap to replace these, I'll just replace it. I don't hear anything. But definitely the whining noise is coming from back here. So we'll drop this, we'll go to the front and just make sure everything was good there. All right, so same thing. We have the car lifted up. Uh, it's actually off the ground, you can see there. And we're gonna wiggle left to right and up and down. We'll see where we're at. It makes it hard because this, um, this is where you steer, so it's kind of hard to tell if it's the wheel bearing or not. Seems pretty solid on this side. We'll drop this one, do the other side. So lift up the car, take off the wheels. These are 19 millimeter lug nuts, take those off. Put that on the uh, jack stand. And always safety first. As we say, safety third, from SMA. So I got two jack stands there and I have the hydraulic lift there. All precautionary is that I chalked up the wheels. And I chalked up the wheels down there. And just to make sure I chucked the front wheels too. So pretty safe there to work on the car. Now it's off the ground. And I have sprayed it so a little bit of PB blast here, here, and in the back there. So a pro tip here when you're doing any kind of brake work, so you don't have to bleed the dang thing. Uh, you want to crack this open, the reservoir. So go to the reservoir and just crack it open. But what I mean by crack is see this little lip here? Just get on the lip, just so we're doing that because that way when we compress the calipers back, the fluid's going to come back here, but we're not siphoning air or something something like that. So that's a little pro tip for you. All right, let's get started. We'll get this thing apart and uh, hop to it. All right, first things first, we're going to take these brakes off. These are 14 millimeters, and then this boot will spin. You're going to use a 17 millimeter um, open run wrench to stop it from spinning. This first thing, let's crack it first before we do anything else. Lefty Lucy. There we go. Now mind you, the pad for this side, it goes inside this caliper. So it may need some finessing to do, but it should come right up. Did I say finessing? I meant, yeah, progressive. There we go. There it is. To prevent the, any tension on the hose, we're gonna use a piece of wire here and tie it to the spring, coilover spring. Try to a brake caliper that way it does drop, puts no tension on the brake caliper, aka your brake line. You don't want that to happen. Keep it under less tension as possible. Next, we're going to move the, the rest of the pad in the brake caliper bracket, and that should be a 17 millimeter. Pads are still good, so we're gonna keep them and reuse them.
Okay, set that aside. Next, let's work on taking out the hub, the brake pad for this. I'll take out these Phillip head screws that holds this in. Does That does actually nothing. The actual thing that holds this hub in is these five lugs. So this is just for looks. I don't know why I didn't have it. Now mine comes out smoother because I, I had to use a uh, impact um, Phillip head driver to get this out. And I replaced it with, these are new, so. And I put some anti-seize on there. That way it comes out pretty easily. Since we're here, a little pro tip is when you put the wheel back on, put some anti-seize on these um, contact points. Don't put it on the lug nuts because the lug nuts are uh, made to uh, lock a certain way. So do not put anti-seize on lug nuts. Pro tip there. So now this should come off should come off. There it is. We do put this back on. Make sure this hole lines up with the the star wrench and the bottom of this e-brake here, handbrake. It has to be able to line up with the star wrench down there. So that star wrench there. Move on to prevent further damage to this car. Remove the speed sensor. It's a 12 millimeter that holds it in. Because the speed sensor sits right where this wheel bearing hub is. So you don't want to damage that as you're taking this out. So the speed sensor is right here. This is 10 millimeter. Unscrew that and take out this thing. You may have to wiggle a little bit to get this out and kind of get that out of the way. Because in the back, we're going to go and remove the, the wheel hub bearing from the, knit, the knuckle. The suspension knuckle. So that's the speed sensor. Clean up a little bit and then we'll stick it back in when that time comes. But now we're just going to move it out of our way. Avoid catastrophe. Crisis averted. So let's go ahead and remove the central. 36 millimeter axle nut. Uh, so if you notice, they pin these uh, nuts that way it doesn't bite when it come out. So you want to unpin that, kind of bang it back out, and hit it with impact wrench, the, the half inch uh, mini impact wrench we have there. Bite the wall. We're going to unpin that with a, with a pin driver and uh, take that out. Should always be made more fully. So we can't reuse this. Let's make sure this matches up before we go any further. Seems a little bit bigger. The wrong uh, axle nut for this car. Today is uh, a holiday, so let's see if we can get this. Uh, available as soon as possible because it's the wrong one. When you keep going, we're going to take out the wheel bearing hub. So 17 millimeter, Happy Lucy. So pro tip, if you don't know what the torque spec on these, um, put a sock on there and then turn it to what do you think it is, what you found online. So a little confused on this one. I believe they said uh, anywhere from uh, 75 foot pounds to 115. So let's see where we're at. So it's at 75. Let's see if it dings at that mark. Might be at 75, as we said. Now that we confirm how much torque we need to put the 17 millimeter hub bearings back, we're gonna actually take it out. So. Four. 
So this should come right out. Be careful, you don't want to mess up the uh, e-brake. So you just push back on the axle as you're pulling out. Spray this down and clean it up a little bit. Inside of this, here's where the speed sensor sits, right by here. Alright, so a little update. I had to run to my local automotive store. So I bought this one on Amazon. That's the correct, incorrect one. Wrong. Right. So. These about the same. The guy at the automotive place telling me that. Um, uh, so this is the OEM. He said, usually with aftermarkets, they look a little bigger, but the internals are the same. Internal dynamic ID, about the same. You can see it's a little bit bigger, but it said the thread should be about the same. And I took them up on that after, and you go put it in where the axle nut is. Move like butter. So we're gonna put the new hub assembly on uh, with the, the 17 millimeters we have there. And here's the one from Amazon. And we're gonna to torque the hub assembly bolts, those 17 millimeters, to 72 foot pounds torque. We found that out by you know using the torque to figure out what number it is, because I found mixed reviews on the internet. It is anywhere from 115 to 72 to 75. So looks like 72 is the um, what I found on the torque uh, lever, and that's what I'm going to set it to. So I'm going to put those wheel bearing bolts into the back of it, um, and then we'll torque it down to 72 foot pounds with a 17 millimeter. I know I haven't been giving you guys the back side of this thing, but I'll show you what that back side looks like. So the whole should be all looks like this. You know, there's the 17 millimeter that goes there. There's the axle that goes right in the back. And here's where the here's where the speed sensor goes to, the 10 millimeter, and here's where the bracket for that um, brake hose goes to. I just took it out, it's a 12 millimeter that goes to those two right there. Just because it's in my way, because there's another bolt that's right behind here, the 17, other 17 millimeter. That's the back side of it. I know it's hard to see with the camera angle. I figured I owe you guys to at least show you that part. Now we're gonna put everything back. So I'll film this side, and the other side will be the same idea. I won't film that part. At least you'll see this part being done. That's where the speed sensor sits, right about there. Put everything back. Sounds pretty smooth. I know you can get it on the camera, but it's pretty smooth here. Just line everything up and put a pop it back in. Um, some recommend putting some uh, bearing grease on it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slap some bearing grease onto this, and then we'll slide this in. Do a dry fit first. You need to line up the the holes yeah, like that, so that looks like it's going in going to go perfectly into the, the holes there. The reason being, I don't want the speed sensor to get any grease on there. So let's see where the speed sensor sits. Yeah, we'll put it over here. That one goes in. It'll be nice and smooth. Axle grease, just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. I'll put one hand behind and hold the axle in place as I put this in. Make sure everything lines up. Close. All right, we're in. At this point, you can um, put the axle bolt on just as a placeholder for this. So you can work on the full bolts in the back if this is a move on. Pro tip, you want to do this by hand, not just screw it in and um, 
more up the threads. And I'm just using it as a placeholder. Looks pretty decent there, so just enough to use it as a placeholder. Now we're gonna put the um, these into place, 17 millimeters, and it's gonna come from the back side. So I'm gonna put some uh, anti seize on here. So next time we, if somebody needs to do this, they'll have no problem taking it out. And then these will be torqued down to 72 foot pounds. And when you place these in, you want to go crisscross, just like when you put on the lugs for um, cars. And like I said before, do not put any anti seize on lug nuts. You don't need it. Then you're just going to make the wheel fall off. Don't do that. Just a little bit of dab. And then we're going to put it on. One more time to make sure it's torqued down. Press cross again. 72 foot pounds. That's your 17 millimeter that holds the uh, wheel bearing in. Let's put our uh, speed sensor and all that back. Just snug it up. That's all. After we're done this, we're going to bring this, we're going to torque this to 181 foot pounds. But the way we do it is we're going to lower this car a little bit, move some of the uh, jack stands. Put a pry bar across the lug nuts and then kind of what prevents it from moving out of the weed. And at the end, we'll pin it that way, this doesn't um, back out on us. Yeah, like that. that always gives us some lever. It's 181 foot pounds. That's what we want. I have some videos up there, they, they hit it with a impact wrench, air gun. But, uh, well, I'm knowing your torque specs, so I'd rather do it the correct way, which is, is what we should be doing. Hear the beep. Sounds about 181 to me now. You're gonna pin this. I'm gonna raise it back up. I'm gonna pin this in. That way, this doesn't back out on us. Anti seize on there. So, we wouldn't have no problems when we need to re replace this disc. What about anti seize? Snug. Don't go crazy, because your wheel, your rim is going to keep this, these screws in, and these things is a placeholder. It has nothing to do. The five lugs will keep this whole hub in, this whole um, brick disc in. So these screws are actually for looks. It has nothing to do with any kind of physical stuff. You just hold the hub in place, but otherwise, it does nothing. All right, we snug that up. Next, we're going to put the Brake crack it back on. And these 17 millimeters will be torqued to uh, 78 foot pounds for these calipers. 79, 79. That's what we're at. <clears throat> so we're going to there. Next, we're going to put in the brakes. Remember, we still have the master cylinder reservoir open, so we, if we're pushing these brakes back, we won't uh, create any air pockets or bubbles. All right, so for the brake pad caliper um, pistons, these are going to be torqued down to, I apologize, 15, 14 millimeter. So 17 foot pounds for the brake pad caliper. These are 15 millimeters. And 
And then when we put the lugs back on, we're gonna crisscross that way it gives you an even attachment to the wheel. It's a hub bearing. There we go. Prince Marin did the rims. That's a little Teflon cone, not Teflon, um, plastic cone. Never use a power tool for your wheel lock, it will break. Use your cross member. It will break your lock, don't do it. Don't do it! So 80 foot pounds for the lug nuts for the wheels. So that's one side. We're gonna do the other side the same way. I'm not gonna film that part. You get the idea, but this will be the opposite side. All right, a little, up, all right, a little update. I broke the speed sensor, ABS sensor. So I got this from Amazon. Here's the part number. Make sure it's for the right rear ABS sensor. There's a replacement part. So I broke this part right here, where it connects right about here. Going an old one, here's the old one, kind of wiggles around a little bit, and we can capture it on camera. See that? It's wiggly. The reason being because there's a boot on here, I want to pry this off the, the steering knuckle in the back right there, and then I can hear, I hear something crack. It's like, well, no. Better off to just replace it than, you know, pretend it didn't happen. So, got this from Amazon. $16, okay? We're gonna install that. And then we should be all done. Uh, plug and play, the wiring, the whole thing comes out. And you can see it connects right there. Just follow the wire, take everything out because it comes was one piece anyway. All right, to prove that that is the correct side where you switched out the rear passenger side, if you want to listen really close, it does make a grinding noise. I don't know if the video can pick that up, but that's why when it spins faster, it's making that winding up, winding up noise, they call it. All right, here we go. We're going for a little truss drive after changing up the wheel bearing. So here we go. Shouldn't hear that uh, wind up noise anymore. If my theory is right. All right, that's it. I'll put it back together. So we changed up the wheel bearing for the back and ran it through on the highway. So everything looks good. If you like this kind of content where I talk about car savings, we'll help you fix stuff yourself on this 2007 Honda CRV. Wind it up noise from the, coming from the back. So we changed up the back wheel, wheel bearing and now we're good. All right, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next video.